Here are 30 most commonly asked interview questions. For cybersecurity GERC governance, risk, and compliance positions, along with detailed answers. 1. What is the role of governance, risk, and compliance GERC in cybersecurity? And how does it contribute to an organization's overall security posture? Answer. GERC provides a framework for aligning organizational objectives with policies, managing risks, and ensuring compliance with regulations. It establishes a structured approach to decision-making, risk management, and regulatory adherence, contributing to a resilient and secure cybersecurity posture. 2. Explain the difference between governance, risk management, and compliance in the context of cybersecurity. Answer. Governance focuses on strategic decision-making and policy enforcement. Risk management involves identifying and mitigating potential threats, and compliance ensures adherence to relevant laws and regulations. Together, they form a comprehensive approach to managing cybersecurity within an organization. 3. How do you establish an effective cybersecurity governance framework within an organization? Answer. Establishing a cybersecurity governance framework involves defining roles and responsibilities, developing policies and procedures, conducting regular risk assessments, and ensuring alignment with business objectives. It also includes implementing oversight mechanisms, such as cybersecurity committees and reporting structures. 4. Can you explain the concept of risk appetite and risk tolerance in the context of cybersecurity? Answer. Risk appetite defines the level of risk an organization is willing to accept to achieve its objectives, while risk tolerance is the acceptable variation in achieving those objectives. Cybersecurity GERC processes help determine, communicate, and manage risk appetite and tolerance, ensuring a balanced approach to risk management. 5. What is the significance of cybersecurity policies? and how do you ensure their effective implementation within an organization? Answer. Cybersecurity policies set the foundation for secure practices within an organization. Effective implementation involves communication, training, and enforcement. Regular reviews, updates based on evolving threats and technologies, and incorporating feedback from stakeholders are key to maintaining relevance and effectiveness. 6. How do you prioritize cybersecurity risks, and what factors would you consider in the risk assessment process? Answer. Prioritizing risks involves assessing their impact on business objectives, likelihood of occurrence, and potential harm. Factors considered include the value of assets at risk, regulatory requirements, and the organization's risk appetite. A risk matrix or scoring system can aid in prioritizing and addressing risks. 7. Explain the role of compliance in cybersecurity GERC, and how would you ensure continuous compliance with relevant regulations and standards? Answer. Compliance ensures adherence to legal requirements, industry standards, and organizational policies. To ensure continuous compliance, regular assessments, audits, and monitoring are conducted. Automation of compliance checks, documentation of evidence and proactive engagement with regulatory changes contribute to sustained compliance. 8. How would you integrate cybersecurity into the overall business strategy and align it with organizational goals? Answer. Migration involves understanding business objectives, conducting risk assessments, and aligning cybersecurity strategies with organizational goals. Regular communication with business leaders, demonstrating the value of cybersecurity investments, and emphasizing the business impact of security measures contribute to successful integration. 9. What is the purpose of a risk register in cybersecurity GERC, and how would you maintain and update it over time? Answer. A risk register documents identified risks, their likelihood, impact, and mitigation strategies. It serves as a central repository for risk information. Regular reviews, updates based on changes in the threat landscape or organizational processes, 
and input from stakeholders ensure the risk register remains accurate and relevant. 10. Can you explain the concept of a risk assessment methodology? And what methodologies would you consider for cybersecurity risk assessments? Answer. A risk assessment methodology outlines the process of identifying, analyzing, and prioritizing risks. Common methodologies include qualitative, quantitative, and hybrid approaches. Selecting the appropriate methodology depends on the organization's goals, resources, and the desired level of detail in risk analysis. 11. How do you ensure that third-party vendors comply with cybersecurity standards and do not pose a risk to your organization? Answer. Ensuring third-party vendor compliance involves conducting thorough assessments, including security audits, reviewing their cybersecurity policies, and verifying adherence to industry standards, establishing contractual obligations, conducting regular audits, and continuous monitoring contribute to managing and mitigating risks associated with third-party vendors. 12. Explain the concept of a cybersecurity framework and how would you select and implement one for an organization? Answer, a cybersecurity framework provides a structured approach to managing cybersecurity risks. Examples include NIST Cybersecurity Framework, ISO 27001, and CIS Critical Security Controls. Selection involves understanding organizational needs, aligning with industry requirements, and ensuring scalability. Implementation includes mapping framework controls to organizational policies and processes. 13. How does cybersecurity GERC contribute to incident response and recovery efforts within an organization? Answer. Cybersecurity GERC contributes to incident response by ensuring the existence of incident response plans, defining roles and responsibilities, and conducting regular simulations and drills. Post-incident, GERC processes aid in identifying weaknesses, updating policies, and implementing corrective actions to enhance future incident response. 14. What is the purpose of a business impact analysis BIA in cybersecurity, and how would you conduct one for an organization? Answer. A BIA assesses the potential impact of disruptions to business operations. In cybersecurity, it helps prioritize resources and efforts based on critical business functions. Conducting a BIA involves identifying critical assets, assessing their value, determining recovery time objectives, and establishing priorities for resource allocation during incidents. 15. How would you ensure effective communication between cybersecurity teams and business stakeholders? to address security concerns and align with business goals? Answer, effective communication involves translating technical risks into business language, using regular reporting mechanisms, and providing updates on key performance indicators, establishing regular meetings, collaborating with business leaders, and incorporating cybersecurity updates into broader organizational communications foster a culture of transparency and understanding. 16. Explain the concept of a control framework in cybersecurity GERC, and how would you select and implement one for an organization? Answer. A control framework provides a structured set of controls to mitigate risks and ensure compliance. Examples include COBIT, COSO, and ISO 27001. Selection involves understanding organizational goals, industry requirements, and scalability. Implementation includes mapping controls to existing policies, conducting gap analyzes, and ensuring continuous monitoring. 17. What is the role of key risk indicators KRIs in cybersecurity, GERC, and how would you develop and monitor them? Answer. KRIs. Provide early warnings of potential risks. Developing KRIs involves identifying key risk factors, defining thresholds, and establishing monitoring mechanisms. Regular reviews, updates based on emerging threats, and alignment with risk appetite contribute to maintaining effective KRIs. 18. How do you ensure that cybersecurity policies and controls are consistently implemented? 
across different business units within a large organization? Answer. Consistent implementation involves developing standardized policies, conducting regular training, and using automated tools for monitoring and enforcement. Establishing a central governance structure, conducting periodic audits, and ensuring feedback loops with business units contribute to maintaining consistency. 19. Can you explain the concept of a risk treatment plan in cybersecurity, GERC? and how would you develop and implement one? Answer, a risk treatment plan outlines how identified risks will be managed or mitigated. Developing a plan involves defining risk mitigation strategies, assigning responsibilities, and establishing timelines. Implementation includes monitoring progress, updating the plan based on changes in risk landscape, and conducting regular reviews. 20. How do you conduct a gap analysis in the context of cybersecurity, GERC, and what steps would you take to bridge identified gaps? Answer. Conducting a gap analysis involves comparing current cybersecurity practices against established frameworks or standards. Steps include defining assessment criteria, conducting assessments, and identifying areas of misalignment. Bridging gaps involves developing remediation plans, assigning responsibilities, and implementing necessary controls to align with desired standards. 21. Describe a situation where you had to manage conflicting priorities between regulatory compliance requirements and business objectives. How did you navigate and resolve the conflict? Answer. I encountered a situation where new regulatory requirements conflicted with existing business processes. I initiated discussions with regulatory experts, business leaders, and legal teams to understand the implications. Collaboratively, we identified areas of compromise, implemented necessary changes to align with regulations, and ensured minimal impact on critical business objectives. 22. How would you ensure that cybersecurity policies and controls are effectively communicated and understood by all employees within an organization? Answer. Effective communication involves conducting regular training sessions, using clear and concise language and policy documents, and providing user-friendly guides. Utilizing multiple communication channels, such as intranet portals and email communications and incorporating cybersecurity awareness into onboarding programs contribute to widespread understanding and adherence. 23. Explain the concept of a risk register in the context of cybersecurity GERP, and how does it aid in risk management? Answer. A risk register is a documented repository of identified risks, their potential impact, and mitigation strategies. It aids in risk management by providing a centralized view of organizational risks, facilitating prioritization, and supporting decision-making. Regular updates and reviews ensure the risk register remains accurate and aligned with organizational goals. 24. How do you ensure that cybersecurity GERC processes are adaptive to changes in the threat landscape and regulatory environment? Answer. Adaptability involves conducting regular risk assessments, staying informed about emerging threats, and actively monitoring changes in regulations, establishing a feedback loop with threat intelligence sources, participating in industry forums, and conducting periodic reviews of GERC processes contribute to maintaining agility in response to evolving challenges. 25. Describe a situation where you had to lead a cybersecurity GERC project. What challenges did you face, and how did you ensure the project's success? Answer. Leading a GERC project involved defining project scope, obtaining stakeholder buy-in, and developing a detailed project plan. Challenges included resource constraints and evolving regulatory requirements. I addressed these challenges through effective communication agile project management, and collaboration with cross-functional teams to ensure the project's success. 26. How do you assess and manage third-party cybersecurity risks? And what criteria do you use to evaluate the security posture of external partners? Answer. 
Assessing third-party risks involves conducting thorough security assessments, reviewing cybersecurity policies, and ensuring alignment with industry standards. Criteria for evaluation include the sensitivity of data shared, the nature of the partnership, and the third party's track record in cybersecurity. Continuous monitoring and periodic assessments contribute to ongoing risk management. 27. Explain the concept of continuous monitoring in cybersecurity GERC, and how does it enhance an organization's security posture? Answer. Continuous monitoring involves real-time, or near-real-time assessment of security controls. It enhances security posture by providing immediate visibility into security events, enabling quick response to threats. Integrating automated tools, establishing alerts based on predefined criteria, and conducting regular reviews contribute to the effectiveness of continuous monitoring. 28. In a scenario where a cybersecurity incident occurs, how would you coordinate the response efforts with different teams, including IT, legal, and communication teams? Answer. Coordinating incident response involves establishing a cross-functional incident response team, defining roles and responsibilities, and developing communication protocols. Regular training and simulation exercises ensure preparedness. Collaboration with legal teams ensures compliance with reporting requirements, and communication teams assist in crafting accurate and timely messages to stakeholders. 29. How would you integrate privacy considerations into the cybersecurity GERC framework, especially in light of evolving data protection regulations? Answer. Integrating privacy involves aligning GERC processes with data protection regulations, conducting privacy impact assessments, and establishing controls to protect sensitive information. Regular updates based on changes in privacy laws, collaboration with legal teams, and user education on privacy principles contribute to an integrated cybersecurity GERC approach. 30. Describe a situation where you had to communicate cybersecurity risks and strategies to C-level executives. How did you tailor your communication to ensure understanding and support? Answer. Communicating with C-level executives involved translating technical risks into business impact, using visual aids and concise language. I focused on aligning cybersecurity strategies with organizational objectives emphasizing potential financial and reputational risks. By providing actionable insights and presenting cybersecurity as a business enabler, I gained understanding and support from C-level executives. In conclusion, cybersecurity GERC governance, risk, and compliance. Interviews often delve into the candidate's understanding of strategic cybersecurity management. The questions span governance, risk assessment, compliance, and the integration of cybersecurity into overall business objectives. Successful candidates demonstrate a comprehensive knowledge of frameworks, risk management methodologies, and the ability to communicate effectively with stakeholders at various levels. Their responses highlight adaptability to evolving threats, a commitment to continuous improvement, and a focus on aligning cybersecurity initiatives with the organization's overarching goals. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAT, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most, asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.